Why is this still happening? Why are brides literally going and getting their faces painted? Literally painted, not a different shade, but a whole different color. They're getting painted white to get married. They changed their name from Fair and Lovely to Glow and Lovely. They thought removing the word fair would, you know, change all the damage that they'd already done for, oh, what, like 40 years? Telling people that they should have whiter skin. Not only women, by the way, men as well, fair and handsome. Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Mariam and I talk about all things fashion and lifestyle. Part of me has been procrastinating making this video because I have so much to say and so many points to get across. Perfectionism was kind of leaving me feeling paralyzed, like I couldn't do it. But here we are and thank you so much for being here. Growing up brown, when you get to a certain age, it becomes very clear that the way you are is not good enough. You're not liked for the way you look. To have access to all the great things in the world, you need to change yourself drastically. You may think that it's not as bad these days, but honestly, why is this still happening? Why are brides literally going and getting their faces painted? Literally painted, not a different shade, but a whole different color. They're getting painted white to get married because that's what they think is beautiful. That's what they think is the beauty standard. They don't believe brown is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, white is beautiful as well as much as brown is. The issue is when people attach too much meaning to the color of their skin to a point where it literally impacts thousands, millions of people in a certain area. There is so much I want to talk about in this video. I want to talk about where the love for white skin comes from in South Asia. I want to talk about how I felt growing up and how many people felt growing up as a South Asian woman. And I want to talk about also how interestingly the beauty standard is so flipped in the West. To give a quick example, in South Asia, tan skin equals not good. However, in the West, tan skin equals good. Tan skin is so sought after in the West, but not so much in South Asia. And and it's so interesting because the self-tanning industry is worth billions. Just last year, it was valued at $1.09 billion. And when you come to the other side of the globe, in South Asia, people are literally doing the opposite. First, let's get an understanding of where the love for white skin comes from in South Asia. Why is it that it's beautiful on you if you are Caucasian, if you're white, but it's ugly on us? It's not desirable on us. We should paint our faces to look like a different person completely but we're not good enough the way we look as is. It definitely comes from somewhere and it comes from many factors. The one important one is that back in the day, the color of your skin quite literally was symbolic of what class you belonged to. For example, the wealthy would not have to be outside in the farm farming, whereas the middle class or the working class were out on the farm in the sun farming. We're out on the sun for hours, obviously, when they're farming and that made them tan skin. So essentially, it started off as how people would differentiate people who were, you know, of higher status and the caste system in India or in South Asia is so toxic on its own. I feel like that's a video on its own for another day. It's funny because it's totally flipped in the West. In the West, if you had tan skin back in the day, it was symbolic of wealth, which is quite the opposite because it signified that you had time and money to go outside, to go abroad and go on holiday. It's just so interesting to see how beauty is literally marketed to be what the majority of the population does not look like. It's quite an emotional topic for me because I just find it so damaging when little girls, when they turn the age of like eight or nine, are told not to play outside because it makes them dark skinned. And obviously, through marketing, what we've been taught is that life's opportunities, whether it is getting a job, getting married, getting a promotion at work, like money, is limited if you don't have white skin. And literally, there's so many brands that talk about this in their marketing through their products. That's literally what they sell. And the number one brand that comes to mind is Fair and Lovely, which has actually been around for close to 50 years, 48 years to be exact. Back in 2020, they had a bit of a rebranding. For many reasons, they changed their name from Fair and Lovely to Glow and Lovely. They thought removing the word fair would, you know, change all the damage that they'd already done for, oh, what, like 40 years? Telling people that they should have whiter skin. Not only women, by the way, men as well, fair and handsome you will only be good enough for marriage, for a job or anything if you have whiter skin. I mean, it is so damaging to see that. You think it may not be present now, but on TikTok, I remember asking everyone, 
especially brown people when they fell in love with the color of their skin and it's so sad to see that like there were actually some people who never really did they still feel that complex inside them where like they're not good enough one girl commented saying that her dad would literally buy a bulk tubes of fair and lovely to give her so that she'd get whiter and you know be better and have better opportunities in life 80 to 90 percent of the comments were positive you guys can check it out yourself if you're interested but it's crazy to see that it's still so prevalent these days if you look at the way Weddings that happen in India. Why are there salons that literally offer you the service to go fully fully white? Why is that a thing? And it's not only the people who are born in households where their parents tell them or their relatives tell them that white skin is better. It doesn't even have to be directly said to you for you to feel that way. I mean through the messaging online, via TV, via Bollywood, via everything you would see on TV with what was being marketed to us. I mean there was no escaping it. Or whether you even hear aunties talk or you know people talk back home about what they want to look like what is really being praised in the media it's hard to like you know not be affected by the message that white equals good brown equals bad i mean i personally never felt like brown was good enough until i was like 15 16 years old for a long time i thought that being brown was kind of like not good i used to love playing in the sun when i was little and i still do and back then i used to be like oh my god i can't be in the sun for too long it's gonna make me tan i'm gonna be ugly like those were literally my thoughts when i was like 12 years old when it shouldn't be at all like why is that something that we even think about growing up i never really understood why people would view brown people as less than even like the brown community themselves like classism or like the whole caste system is so damaging in south asian society and why do people judge others based off of their last name like is that not another form of racism it's just crazy to see that the notion of you are not going to be good enough you will be less attractive, less appealing to the world if you get tanned. That literal notion was ingrained in so many of our brains growing up. And think about how damaging that is to our psyches. The message I'm trying to get across, especially to the brown community, is that there should not be an emphasis placed on the color of your skin. Why do we have to be racist towards our own people? Brown people, like we ourselves are so diverse in the way we look. That's something that should be celebrated. I mean, if you talk to someone from the North or from the South, like they're gonna look completely different. That's beautiful. That should be celebrated, not something that, you know, should segregate us. Like, do you guys sense my frustration? I'm frustrated because it's still so common in today's day and age. If you go and speak to someone in school, in high school, in South Asia, in India, for example, I can guarantee you that they place importance on the color of their skin when that should not be the case at all. Skin is beautiful. Your skin is beautiful, whether it is white, black, brown, it doesn't matter. Maybe like one company changed their name from fair and lovely to glow and lovely but does that really change anything the years of mass marketing towards people about the color of their skin dictating whether they will have a good life or not like that's already like the damage is done it's about breaking that cycle in our family it's about asking ourselves where our ideologies come from and not being in a trance for the rest of our lives i hope this video sparks questions in your mind i hope this video made you feel healed heard i love talking about my culture i love talking about brown culture and all things fashion and lifestyle and if you aren't subscribed already now would be a great time to support me and subscribe and also follow my instagram and tiktok if you aren't already i love you guys so 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 much and i'll see you guys next time bye you